40 years ago, we were ending perhaps the most turbulent year in the 20th century. The Democratic Convention had exploded into violence. 1,200 Americans were dying a month in Vietnam. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. We had just lost Martin Luther King. We had just lost Bobby Kennedy. Some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say why not. And suddenly the year ended with this transcendent moment. Three, two, one, zero. We have liftoff. No human eyes had ever seen the far side of the moon. You said you were a girlfriend dating, Owen. Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and William Anders were the three men aboard Apollo 8. These three men were the first humans to do it. We didn't understand the significance of the mission until we got back home again. Then we understood uh, the, the timing of it, the coincidence that we got around the moon at a particular time, the pictures that were taken, all got together into, I think, a very formidable and a very positive influence at the end of 1968 for the people of the United States. Time was the first magazine that came out in a very broad way with the news that human beings were going to try to fly to the moon. And of course, in January, Borman, Lovell, and Anders were named as Time's Men of the Year. The most iconic picture in the history of space travel was Earthrise, as seen from the far side of the moon by the Apollo 8 astronauts. We could see for the first time how fragile, how destructible Earth is, and we could see it from a quarter million miles away. The famous photo was taken by Bill Anders. Yeah, I wouldn't let them touch a camera. <laughs> looking back and seeing the Earth for the first time. And, and, and frankly, I lost all interest in the moon after that and then focused back on, on the Earth because uh, it was the only place in the universe there was any color. We were away from home a long time, uh, 240,000 miles and uh, Christmas Eve. I focused on the Earth. For all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. Christmas Eve 1968, uh, Apollo 8 had one of, its, um, one of its live broadcasts back to Earth. We were told about six weeks before the flight that we would uh, be having a, a, a TV broadcast with the largest audience in history. And the only instructions that we got from NASA was to do something appropriate. That struck a real chord with me because it showed that they had confidence in us. They pointed the camera out the window and they showed Earthlings two things, our Earth from a quarter of a million miles away, and the surface of the moon rolling by underneath. We had never seen the likes of images like that, certainly not coming back live. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. They read aloud from Genesis, all three astronauts taking turns on Christmas Eve. I must say, as I started it, it came came to me really for the first time that this was a momentous thing. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Sending three emissaries of the species this kind of distance, and then having them talk live to the rest of us, the species that sent them there, and convey something so transcendent as a verse about the creation of the species, whether you, you're, you're religious or not, it transcended all of that and just brought people together in what was otherwise a very violent year. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, good night, good luck, Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. This is the best crew that flew in Apollo. God bless y'all.